Hello, welcome again to Reason and Truth Ministries. We are continuing our discussion on Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And as we continue to go through this module and this teaching of why we ought to seek Yeshua Mashiach, which is Jesus Christ. Yeshua Mashiach is the Hebrew name of him who took on flesh and came to reconcile us back onto the creator. Yeshua meaning savior or him who save or him who secure those who belongs to him. That is what Yeshua means. Hamashayak. Hamashayak. Ha is the definite article which is the anointed or him who is disbursed. Who, who is spread out across all the span of creation. Is like anointing, like when they spread oil on somebody, how it smear out, and that's what that is what the Hebrew word literally means. It means to smear. It means to to be drawn out, to to to, to break out. And this is why Yeshua told them to go out into the world in Matthew twenty-eight. Go and make disciples of men. And last week we look at Matthew six thirty-three. Now, who can find Matthew 6.33 for me and let's, let's get a backdrop on what, what is actually going, going on there. Matthew yeah, Matthew 6.33. So let's, 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 uh, let's commence our reading from Matthew, Matthew, um, from Matthew 25. And this is what, what is going on here is a, is, is a sense of anxiousness and anxiety of the people and, and people who are anxious. So now, the people at that particular point in time, Yeshua just come on the scene. And you got to understand the backdrop of Israel. Israel now, they were waiting on Mashiach because Mashiach have been promised throughout time. And every thousand years or so in Jewish and Hebrew, uh, Israel culture, you have what you call Mashiach, who came and they were very prophetic and they were um, renowned in that culture and community and they set certain precedent. So Isaiah would have been known as a Mashiach, right? David would have been known as a Mashiach because these a man who changed the courses of Israel, what? History. So now, Yeshua, when he came, he came in the fullness of time. And the fullness of time meaning there were all these different roads and all shipment and interaction of world connection to all different parts of the world. And the known world of that time of the day was the Greco-Roman culture. They were the one who had total dominion over all. And the common language of the day was Koine Greek. And also you have Aramaic and Hebrew because the Jewish custom and culture, once you are Judaic in birth, you learn Torah and you grow up in in yeshiva you go and you learn scripture because you are taught to speak and to recite torah because that's the mitzvot that's the first mitzvot that we ought to do a mitzvot is like a command or a teaching that you must carry out every day in order from a jewish perspective that you find yourself weighing more on hashem's blessings or mercy meaning you're going to be in more favor with him so it was a work oriented culture where you did a lot of work in order to justify your place or your position in god so when you're reaching you say well i did all these midfoot i did 613 mitzvah i carry out the Torah, just as how when Yeshua asked the young man, he said, the young man asked Yeshua, he said, well, Master, what shall I do to be saved? 
he said, um, well, keep the law and the commandment. And he said, well, all of that I have done all my life. He said, okay, very well. Because he is a, a Jew. And he kept it. He said, go and sell all what you have. And come back. And what? The young man went away. Sad. Wow. He kept the law and Torah, but he went away sad. Go and sell all that which you have. So that means he had possession. He had substance. He ha but he had no wealth. You see, there's a difference between wealth and substance. He had substance that could sustain him, but he had no wealth where he could have continued to capitalize on the skill that the creator has given him. Now look at something. So now we see in, in this portion of scripture, now I think that is enough backdrop and then you can go and look at the tape last, last week and there are more historical factors therein where now you can get a, 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 an insight into what is actually going on here at the Sermon of the Mount. And remember that Moshe received the mitzvot, the Ten Commandments from Yorei Wafe on Mount Sinai. And when he received this Ten Commandments, which is five principles, because when you look at the Ten Commandments, it's on two tablets. God is what? God is great. God is awesome. But why did he write the Ten Commandments on two tablets? Why? Why did he do it? It's like, holy, like, he could have penned it on one. But he wrote it on two. He wrote it on two. Why two? You're talking about duality. You're talking about physicality and spirituality. Because you're talking about the first five commandments, the last five. You're talking about the divine, uh, metaphysical, transcendental. And you're talking about all that which is physical and relational in this physical realm, and there are much more that could go into it. However, this is just a backdrop into what we're trying to communicate here this evening. Now look at something. He received the Torah. He received the mitzvah to receive that which now is commanded or shema to Israel. Shema. So he says, Shema, Israel, Yahweh Elokeinu, Yahweh Achad. Here, Israel, Yahweh, your creator, Yahweh, the one united person is one. God. So now, Moshe received this Ten Commandment. And while he received this Ten Commandment, Israel, who was right there with him, they heard and they saw what was going on. So right there, Yeshua now is reenacting that which took place in Deuteronomy 6.5 or 6.1. Yeshua is, he is replaying because they were Torah taught and Torah ready. So everything in Jewish culture, there is parallel. And in Hebrew, they love a lot of pond and parallel and the, everything is is pragmatic and relational because it's a pragmatic culture so what you find happening there is now Yeshua is on mount on this mount and now he's communicating to all these people and bringing back to bear on their mind where Mount Sinai so now he is bringing back to their remembrance Mount Sinai, Haye Sinai. Moshe is Moses? Huh? Yes. So now, now he is bringing a readiness in their mind. Now, who have uh, 625? 
Can somebody, all right, let me just read it. Hear what he said. This is why I tell you, don't worry about your life. So now he started to talk to them. Because before, all of them were concerned about all their possession and all what they have and all what they had gained and acquired in life, which we have today, right? We all have all these things that we acquire and gain. Good. And Solomon talk about it in Ecclesiastes, in the Songs of Solomon, in the Proverbs. This is why I tell you, don't worry about your life, what you will eat or what you shall drink, or about your bodies, what you will wear. Isn't life more than food and the body more than clothing? Isn't life more than food? Now he's bringing back to remember what, 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 what man fell for in the Garden of Eden. Food. Don't eat of that tree, that fruit. Don't eat that fruit. Look at the birds of the sky. They don't sow or reap or gathered into bands. Yet your heavenly Father feed them. Aren't you worth more than they? Now he's asking a question. Aren't you worth more than they? Can any of you add a single cubit to your height by worrying? Because now they were anxious because all what they were seeing, they wanted this revolutionist. They wanted this man to wipe out Rome and wipe out the Greco culture now and establish 